I don't I don't shy away from as you probably if you've been here very long I talk about I only talk about or teach on money a few times throughout the year um, I do that for a, for a reason one it's important for us to teach on it but two I'm not gonna be, beat you over the head with it all right here's the reality of it this is a heart condition if you tithe for Pastor Allen by the end of the month you'll already have stopped if God changes your heart and you allow the Holy Spirit to move and you tithe because you believe it's in, in obedience to the divine, divine command and to our Lord, you'll never stop. Amen? Because Amen. once you see the blessing of it, you will continue on. So I am just teach on it so that you can see the blessings of it. So it's Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Now, as you're turning, there was a strong man at the circus. And the strong man was, uh, he was working out and doing his routine and he took a lemon and he squeezed that lemon until every last drop of the juice was out. He looked out over the crowd into the, uh, all, everyone sitting out there and he said, I will give $200 to anyone who can squeeze one last drop out of this lemon. And a little uh, elderly lady raised her hand. She said, oh, and she walked right up on stage. And he said, okay, ma'am, here you go. And she just a little bitty thing. She pushed her hands together and she squeezed out a whole tablespoon of lemon juice. And the strong man handed her $200. And he said, ma'am, if you don't mind me asking, how in the world did you get another tablespoon out of that lemon? She said, practice. I have been a church treasurer for 40 years. <laughs> Listen, I don't believe that we need to be trying to squeeze the last drop out of the lemons who are giving. I believe we need to get new lemons into the bit, into the bit, and when we all learn to sacrifice the same, then we all live in abundance. Amen. God has a plan that's set up, and it works tremendously well for the give of the gift, the giver. Everything benefits. So we see here a wonderful plan that God has set up. And this plan is about equal, equal sacrifice. Okay? It doesn't, you, you see, if we just give whatever we want, then there's, there is no consistency to how God's Word and God's church moves forward. We serve a God of order. Amen? Yeah. The Word teaches us it's an orderly he teaches us and He trains us. So, in His plan, He has come up with this unbelievable plan and it, of the tithe first, and that doesn't end tithing. There is also giving above and beyond. So, it's a wonderful plan in which He tells us, by the way, if you are, are, are consistent in your giving and tithing, that He will open the windows to heaven and pour out His blessings on you. That's as close to Joel Osteen as I can get. <laughs> and that's Bible. So I don't mind preaching the, the fact that God says, when you give, He will bless you for your giving. Amen. Okay, so that's important for us to also understand. But we're not trying to squeeze blood out of a turnip here. We are giving back what God has given us. See, God has given us in the Christian life, we believe God has given us everything. Say amen. amen. Everything. And everything that we have is His, and we are just giving back a small portion of it to understand that God can do way more with 90% than we can do with 100%. So we understand that God can handle this. We know that this is not something... Uh, the, the, to worry over or worry about. It is literally a decision of whether I'm going to be obedient or not. Now let's read what Malachi has to say Malachi. here in verse 10. <laughs> Bring ye the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be room enough not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, 
saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, and all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. We will continue on in the series today, and, and why I tithe. So, I want to, you know, teach a few things, but also want you to understand that this is something I do, something I believe in, something I have seen work, and, it's not, and I'm just truly blessed. By the whole thing in which God has set up. It's a wonderful, wonderful plan. So we see it also in verse 8. What was going on? Let me give you the number one. It's in, it is important to God. So my number one reason, reason for tithing is God made it very clear it's important to God. Jesus Christ made sure that we understood that our giving and our tithing was a very was very important to him. Over 2600 verses in the word of God speak to and about finances and tithing. So it's important to God. So it should be important to you and I. In verse 8 it says, Malachi 1.8, And if you offer the blind sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer lame and sick, is it not evil? If offer now unto offer it now unto thy governor, will he be pleased? Would he accept this, he says? What began to happen was the people of the day, they didn't operate so much on money as we do. Alright? Everything's money. It's cash, it's credit, it's check cards, everything's money, all right? So this day, it was more of a bartering type system. You could do a lot of bartering in the day. You may pay with cattle or sheep, or you may pay with chickens, or you may pay tithes through your, uh, through your crops or whatever the case may be. But you gave of the first fruits. You gave of the best you had. What had began in this day is that the people began giving God what was left over and not the best. And he said in verse 14, be cursed, uh, be, or, But cursed be the deceiver, which hath his flock male and valid, and sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. He says, so cursed is the one who has good, but does not give good, because I am a great king, says the Lord. He, everyone here that believes we serve a great and mighty king, say amen. amen. We serve an awesome king. If you need no other reason to give, it's because He is a mighty King, amen, amen, who loved us when we were unlovable. He deserves all of it. I deserve none of it, but He chooses to give it to us anyway. That's, right. That's a God who loves us. That's an amazing God. So, number one, last week it is important to God. Number two, it is an opportunity to test God. I said this last week. There is, I do not believe there is anywhere in the Bible where God says, other than this verse, test me. Now, that's pretty steep. That's pretty good stuff. Let's be honest. So if you're sitting here today and you're going, you know, and you've been praying about it since last week, and you're going, I'm not real sure about this whole tithing thing, preacher. You know, you don't understand how much I like to play golf. You don't understand how much I like to shop. You don't understand how much I like to fish or boat, or hunt, or do the oil uh, stuff. What is that? Essential oils. Do the essential Preacher, you don't know how much calm that essential oil brings me. <laughs> I have a few things to say, but I'm going to leave it off because then all the ladies here ain't going to tithe, all right? They're going to be mad at me. They're like, nope, I ain't giving you a red cent. You're going to talk about my essential oils. So, uh, but, you know, if y'all really believe in that, y'all come by my house later on today, and I'm going to give you the cure-all. But it's $100 a bottle, amen? So y'all just come on by. Give me time to mix up the old castor oil a little bit, and I'll have it ready for you. All right. I'm joking, ladies. All right. They're already looking at me going, we're not giving you any more. That's it right there, preacher. No more. So, uh, okay. Yeah, it, it, some of it, no doubt, probably works. But it's an opportunity to test God. He says, listen, this is what I want you to do. If you're not sure, try me. That's what he said. I want you to try it. And if I do not bless you, if I don't take care of every need you have, See, here's the problem with us not wanting to, uh, we don't want to stop 
paying a $200 cable bill for 472 channels that we cannot watch. Amen? Or a thousand channels we cannot watch. But we're going to pay that $200 cable bill instead of giving to God. Or uh, we're going to have four cell phones hooked up to our... Listen, does anyone remember that we had to use pay phones at one point in time? That? I know all, all the young people under 30 have never seen a pay phone, all right? Maybe some of you have. It's this thing you would put quarters in, a little booth. It was a glass booth. My wife and I first got married, moved six hours away, had our first child. We had Mark. We didn't have cell phones, all right? Or if we did, cell phones was this great big box that looked like a daggone suitcase, amen? You remember those things? Yeah, so, and, and you had to have a little bit of money to have one of them, so uh, we would save our change throughout the week so that on Fridays or Saturdays we could go down to the pay, to the, uh, pay booth, to the phone booth, and I would watch my son as she called her parents. She would watch her, my son as, as I called my parents. And when we run out of coins, you run out of time. Right? That was the thing. Imagine a society that paid as you go. <laughs> now, y'all can't imagine that, amen? A society where you actually paid for things up front before they got sent to you. I know I'm, a, I'm an Amazon Prime mem member too. I'm telling you. <laughs> That thing is from the devil, amen? <laughs> I am telling you what, that is as addicting as anything that is out there, that Amazon Prime. Can you just put it on reorder? I mean, great time of day. Every time you think of something, in my mind, I, I just got a new AR the other day, and I thought, you know, I need one of the... Yeah, yeah, amen. That's right. I'm not ashamed to say that either, and I got, I'm going to buy another one very, very soon. <laughs> I am stocking up, amen. So for all of you that love guns, I love you, but you know, you'll get it right one day. All right, so let's move on. So, and I'm thinking in my mind, I need a, a, a wider volume or a bigger screen or scope that I can see through. So if I get into shortwave combat, we have to fight off our governor up in Northern Virginia. All right, so I, don't think I'm the only one that's saying that everybody here is thinking it, amen? You know you have been. That's exactly right. So, I tell you, now, we're blessed. The people didn't vote that foolishness in. We're okay for now, all right? So, so anyway, so and I thought about it, and that's the worst thing. Satan said, check Amazon. <laughs> they have everything. I mean, there was no reason for me to even check. Five minutes later, and some odd dollars, it was on the way. You know what? Two days later, it's at my door. And I'm thinking, man, I can got a clear shot. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, let's move on. All right, Amazon is of the devil, all right? So let's get that right. It'll put you in debt. It's not of the devil. We just have to have restraint. We're not real good at that. Number one, again, it is important to God. So it should be important to us. It is important to test and try God. If you're having a problem paying your tithes, the reality of it is, and I hate to say this, probably your finances are cattywampus anyway. Amen? Yeah, y'all get cattywampus, right? That's backwards. Okay, there's another term that I can't say for that. So, we're moving on. Number three, it is an opportunity for God... To you all were thinking it too. See? <laughs> you all were judging me up here. You're all sitting there thinking of the phrase that I just... And God forgive me for them thinking about it, but that's not my fault, all right? So anyway. So, it's an opportunity for God to provide for us. Now, here's the great thing. God providing for us strengthens our faith. For every week you uh, give and tithe, for every month that you have given to God and trusted your finances in Him, your faith grows because where your finances are, there your heart is as well. So when you are giving, you are growing. It's an important concept for us to understand that every week we grow in faith when we give. And there are special blessings. Now, number four. It is a way of participating in God's work. You see, this is the great thing that a lot of folks do not think about. When you are giving, tithing, when you are involved in the ministry here at Sherlin Baptist Church, it's not just Sherlin Baptist Church. And remember, first and foremost, you are being obedient to God. And then, the things that happen here are also to your account. 
the, the number of students that have been trained in Faith Bible Institute. Will you raise your hands? Every student that's been through Faith Bible Institute. Amen. Every person here who is giving and tithing plays a part in that. Because you give us the ability through your tithes and offerings to be able to keep the church open, to be able to pay the power bill, to be able to have the projectors and the screens. And you make these things possible. VBS. Vacation Bible School reaches almost 100 kids every year around this neighborhood. If you are giving and tithing, you are a part of reaching those children. Last year at youth camp in West Virginia, I went over and had the privilege to preach at youth camp. We saw 19 souls get saved. That's a, a number that's better than 10%, by the way. We've seen a wonderful harvest. For those of you giving and tithing, you have played a part in that. And that is how? Because you make it... Uh, it helps me. You are supporting me to do and go what God has called me to do. Therefore, you have played a part in... Those 19 souls being saved. Now, isn't that wonderful? Amen. 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 See, it's, we must think of the big picture. Had I never become saved, never become a child of God, I would not have been able to support children in India. I would never have supported children in the Philippines. I would have never been able to, to go and do the things we did for the flood victims in, in West Virginia. I would never be able to have experienced these many, many things that are made possible through your obedience to the divine command to tithe. You see, there's a much bigger thing here. We are participating in the work of God. Now let me ask you this, a little story. Let's say you were going to Italy. Your job was moving you over to Italy. You were going to be there for eight months. Eight months. They said, this is what we're going to do. We can give you all of your money while you're over there. And that's no trouble. And you can spend all of it you want. But we got you an apartment. Here's your apartment. But everything you buy in the apartment has to stay here. You can't take any of it home. So... You can furnish the apartment. And you, can, you can do whatever you want to do. You can decorate the walls. You can hang a great big 75-inch uh, TV. You can do whatever you want. Spend as much money as you want on the apartment for the next eight months. But then when you leave, it all stays here. Or you can simply send your money back to your bank. And when you get home, it will all be waiting for you there. How many of you here would spend all of your money or a great majority of your money and leave it in Italy? Everybody. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Okay. But if you're not giving and tithing, that's what you're doing. Amen. You see, if we don't give, we're spending it all here on a temporary apartment that will one day be gone. But if we are giving to God, we are placing it in the bank of the Almighty and we're going to reap the rewards for eternity. Amen? Amen. Woo, that's a little different take on it. See, that makes sense to us. And it should, I want it to make sense to you because you are literally investing in eternity. Eternity, friends. So it's, you're investing in souls of people. You are investing in things that moss and rust will not take away. But you are investing in things that are protected by the Almighty. That's where we need our money going. Amen. I know there's nothing wrong with having a, a nice house or a nice car. Or there's, there's nothing wrong with those things. I'm not against anybody being rich. Right? I'm not, not against that. As long as you aren't allowing your money to control you. Okay, no matter who, how much money you have, you need to be in control of that money. You need to make sure and understand that that is all given by God. And at any point, He can take it away from you. Everything, even after the 10%, we need to make sure we are bringing God glory with how we spend our money. Even after that. Remember, it's all His. We are stewards. Now, next time you go to the liquor store, think about that. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I know. I know. You're all saying we don't do that. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Can't say a lot there, so I'm just going to stop for a minute there, and we're going to let everybody ponder on that as you're all sitting here taking it in. Everybody's looking around going, I wonder who it was he seen. <laughs> but if I said that, then you would ask me, what was he doing at the liquor store? <laughs> See, I know what you're thinking. I've got you down. All right, let's move on. Verse number five. <laughs> I'm giving you a hard time. All right. Tithing is a means of putting God first. All right. Now, this I, it probably should have been number two. But, you know, they don't, that's just not how it comes. And, and sometimes i got to learn through but let's think about this. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21 says this. Lay up uh, for yourselves treasures of... Do not lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth. Where moth rust does corrupt them and where thieves break through, steal, break through and steal. But lay up treasures for yourself in heaven where there be no moth nor rust does corrupt. And where the thieves do not break in and steal... For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, we need, we want, we desire our hearts to be one with God. We want our hearts to be uh, meshed with Him. And we want our hearts to be a reflection of His heart. And this is one way, one more way, we are obedient. You see, putting God first is important. Now, we need to make it a priority in life. And listen, I know tithing isn't easy. Did anyone here wake up this morning and say, well, for the first time, I think I'll tithe? No. Did anybody here ever, throughout the period of your Christian life, wake up just one morning without ever being taught and say, you know what, I'm going to give God 10% this morning? You know why? not in our nature. Tithing is a discipline. Church coming to church is a discipline. It's things that we learn over time to be disciplined in this area. Now you know this and I know this. If you're not disciplined in your spending, friend, you'll end up with, with a credit card that's $50,000 in debt. And they'll send you another one to run out. Amen? They will. And after that one, another one. And then guess what? Then you can hire somebody to go out and argue your case so that you don't have to pay it all back. Isn't that crazy? That's ridiculous. I'm sorry if you have a credit card debt like that. Uh, you need to pay that back every dime. You bought it. You were the one that spent it. You need to pay it back. Now you may have to file chapter 11 and do it over a 30 years period of time. But friend, you the one that done that, you the need to take the responsibility and take care of it. Amen? Yeah. I know you don't like that. <laughs> but it's true. You keep that spending down. You be accountable for what you're doing. If you have a... Boy, I'm going to get on this credit card just for a minute, all right? <laughs> this that you shouldn't have a credit card that you can't pay off out of your account at any point in time. Amen. You understand that? There should be, if there's more credit... Then you have money in the bank, friends, you're lopsided. You're cattywampus again. You need to make sure you can take that thing at any point, pay it off, and it's not going to put you in a bind. Because that's just running. That's, you're just getting things. It's impulsive. Remember, it's a discipline. Tithing, giving, finances is a discipline that we have to learn. If you don't, You'll be in debt up to your eyeballs where you can blink your eyes. And they'll just give you more. You know, at no point will our government look at us. We're how many trillions of dollars in debt? At no point is our government, or is, are they going to stop sending you cards? I mean, for heaven's sakes, we haven't had a government with a balanced budget since Clinton. That doesn't speak well of us, does it? We can do better than this. As a, as a church and as a government, I get off the credit card. If that rang your bell a little bit, then don't be mad at me. I want you to go home and pray about it. You need to get out of debt. You need to figure these things out, folks. These are important things. Verse or Number six, tithing is a means of practicing your faith. It's a way of participating in God's work. 
It's a means of, of putting God first. It's a way of practicing your faith. It is putting into action, hopefully, what you are saying throughout the week. I am praying that you are practicing your faith every day. And this is another way for you to practice your faith. This is another way for you to show everyone, when you put that tithing check in there, I promise you, your neighbor's looking. And some of them are trying to figure out how much you'll give. And you know you are. When it comes by you, if it's right side up, you're just taking a glance at it. I didn't see that. I didn't look over there. Was that a 20 or a 5? Was that a dollar? Two dollars. This is between them and God. Between you and God. I, uh, listen, I don't, I don't know who tithes here. That's the honest truth. I, I don't know. Now, I, I don't know exactly what the deacons give, but I know if they don't tithe, then they won't be a deacon real long. And I, that's how strongly I am about that. So I, I will say, I do check in to make sure they are tithing. I don't want amounts but I do want to know that they're tithing and giving. Okay? Now, it's not every week. Now the deacons and wives are sitting there going, oh, no, I missed a check last week. <laughs> That's not how I do things, all right? So you get at least two weeks. So, <laughs> make it up next week or see you later. So, uh, no. It's a way of practicing. I do make a lot of jokes when we talk about money because if I don't, you won't come back next week. That's just the reality of it, okay? We have to learn to smile about these things. How many times in the Word of God, when you're reading God's Word, do you sit there and go, oh, man. It's just not all fun and games. Listen, I don't like everything that I read in here. And when I say that, every time somebody, everybody goes, oh, my gosh. Listen, it's hard for me. Friends, it's not, I don't like it, but it's true. And I have learned... I better be obedient to it or I'm in trouble. So what I've learned over time is a learned discipline to understand when God says it, that settles it. That's as far as it goes. Amen. But see, that didn't come easy. I don't like being told what to do. You all don't like being told what to do. Your spouse doesn't like you telling them when they're wrong. Either way. Girlfriend, boyfriend, it's not received well all the time, now is it? Don't look at each other, don't point. I already got some ladies. I see men over there going, <coughs> <laughs> Ladies, be nice. We're not all perfect. So we all don't know these, you know, we all have to learn disciplines. The Bible tells us many, many times, if you're reading it and you're in it, it steps on your toes. See, this is something you can handle. This is not something where you have to go, I don't know that I can ever do that. God says, just try me. Test me. If this doesn't work, then you go back and do whatever you want to do. But I want you to test me. So I, it's such an open door for us. And it's such a blessing. It's such a blessing. Why would you not try to be obedient to God. It's wonderful, friend. I am not kidding you. To understand that every week, you know, people would say, you know, you're crazy giving the church hundreds of dollars every week. What in the world? Thousands of dollars every year. What are you thinking? I'm thinking, my home is not here. Amen. I'm thinking, I am just a sojourner. I'm just passing through. When I get home, I would like to have invested more money than to just build a little shack. When I get there, there are so many things that I have that I have to answer for, just stupid things over time that when I while I've even been saved and uh, the things that, that I could have done and I didn't do and things that listen, this is not one of those things that I want to have to stand before God and bow my head and go, Lord, I'm sorry. When I had the ability. So, it's a way of practicing your faith. It's important to God. It should be important to you. It's an opportunity to test God. It's an opportunity for God to provide for you. It's a way of participating 
in God's work. It's a means of putting God first and a way of practicing your faith. You see, there's more to tithing and giving than just simply putting a check in the, uh, an envelope into the plate. It's an example. It's faith. It's love. It's understanding that He is in charge of all things. It is pretty, putting your pride aside and being humbled in the sight of Almighty God. It's trusting that He can do so much more with this than I can. It's a way of showing your love for the one who loved you when you were absolutely unlovable. And it's a way for you to show your neighbor, listen friend, I truly love my Lord. Way more to giving and tithing than simply putting a check or an envelope. God loves you today. I love you today. I want you to know this is important. So I teach it. And I'm not going to beat you over the head with it today. You know, last week I asked for you to go home. I just said, I want you to go home and pray. Because I want you doing what God would want you to do. I don't want you to do what Alan George wants you to do because it just won't last like that. It won't. This is you and this is God and this is what am I going to do because here's the reality. It'll never become a discipline if you never put it into practice. Amen? Amen. Nothing in life comes without practice. Nothing in life becomes a discipline if you never try it and do it over and over and over. So here today... Last week I've asked you to pray. This week I'm going to ask you to pray. But I'm asking you to make a decision this week. I'm asking you to look inside and really listen to the Holy Spirit of God. and Decide. Make a choice. Now this is what I can do. This is what I'm going to do. I've told you over and over, I believe 100%. If you're sitting here today... And you believe, you know, God is calling me to tithe. I'm just going to do it. Write the check. Just settle it. Write the check. There you, go. you say, whoo, preacher, that's a big step. He's a big God. Amen. Okay? If you're sitting here going, okay, I don't tithe. And pastor, I'm, man, you know, $100 or whatever it is. You know, I just, wow. There's been many of us who were in the same boat when we were sitting here looking at it going, am I going to be able to eat potatoes or just brown beans all week? <laughs> One, you'll bless the brown beans and you'll be all right, okay? I'm living proof of that. I think I lived on them for my whole 18 years in West Virginia. So it's just a staple. God bless them, but I love them today, all right? So... But I promise you'll bless it. But I also know that he blessed Lisa and I, and we didn't go about it that traditional route because of where we were and our finances. I can also tell you that if you're sitting here going, Pastor, my finances are a mess, I'm going to have to get some things straight. This is what I'm telling you. If you'll start sacrificing now for God, he's going to bless the effort as you move forward. So I also see and understand that you need to pay your bills. Don't you? That's, that's something you need to do. As a Christian, you need to pay them. You need to be on time if at all possible. But if you're here and you can say, Pastor, I just honestly, it's such a mess. I don't know. There are people in this church that will help you. They're not going to judge you. We have all been there to a point. Lisa and I, we sacrificed what we could at a point when we were struggling to feed our family, God blessed it. Our whole goal was, God, I want to get to where you're at. And we're going to sacrifice to get there. And we did. We sacrificed raises and we sacrificed many things, understanding that it's worth me not drinking an extra coffee every day for me to be able to give uh, and tithe to my Lord. And in honesty... A coffee at four and five dollars a cup. If you get one every day, friend, you can probably tithe just off the coffee that you don't drink. <laughs> off of taking, you know, a two liter soda used to be fifty cents, yeah. or a, a 18, 16 ounce was fifty cents. It's two dollars now. 
Let's think about this. A couple sodas a week. A couple coffees a week. Maybe you don't go out and eat hot dogs once. I promise you, a hot dog ain't going to kill you every now and then. Right. All right? Well, I mean, if you eat them every day, it'll kill you. Not, not an all bad thing. I mean, good, huh? Come on. Only eat gravy from Hardee's or wherever you get your gravy, Mama's Kitchen. Only eat it once this week instead of four times. Whatever it takes, do the little things first because they will add up. I promise you this. As expensive as things are today, if you will do little things and start sacrificing, those little things will become bigger things. And one day, you will be, as my wife was as talked about last week, because she was so excited when we got to write our first tithe check right in the church. Make it a priority in life. And God will bless you for it, I promise you. Let's pray. Father, you